we'll call this part one of the motor installation. I'm not sure how many parts are going to be, but I want to make sure that the runout of each component um, is as close to zero as possible as I put this together. And the first step on that is going to be to put a dial indicator on the motor shaft. If you're not familiar with the dial indicator, um, this little pin here goes in and um, tells you how much the, the pin is moving in and out on the dial indicator. So what we're going to do here is we're going to rotate the shaft and watch the indicator. And the runout on this shaft is zero, zero, zero. It is not moving at all. So life is good. That motor coupling is heating up. This is an interference fit. So we need to warm it up and uh, get that coupling to expand a bit so that it drops on. I'm going to put it in there for an hour at oh, probably 350 degrees. Coupling is from Canadian EV. Uh, it's a great company. Um, they have couplings for a lot of different applications. And as long as I got you here, I'm also working on the layout for the control panel. Um, that'll be a future video, so just a little teaser for you. It's been an hour at about 380, 390 degrees in this old convection toaster oven that we had laying around. And it should be ready to go on. So I've got some heavy gloves lined up, and I've got a 2x2 and a small sledge there. I'm hoping I don't need those, um, but just in case it needs to get tapped on. Um, in this application, there is a spacer. Not all applications have a spacer, so that's in there. And of course, we're going to put the keyway in. Um, I don't think it's a good idea to put any sort of compound in there. Just let it be and hope it stays put. So uh, the idea is to make a quick move from the toaster oven over to the motor. Let's see how it goes. I bumped the temperature up to 400 and gave it another half hour. I'm not going to try and mic it. I'm just hoping it fits. So here we go. Actually went on pretty easy. I just uh, had it set up wrong. Oh well. Life is good. <clears throat> Coupling is installed. Um, and I thought I would check the runout on the outside of this coupling. Um, outside of the coupling is kind of meaningless because we're actually um, going to be bolting the engine coupling onto here. Um, but I just thought I would check it for the heck of it. Didn't do quite as good a job of mounting the dial indicator. You can see it being pretty jittery there, but um, ultimately I've got no, uh, no run out. You know, it shows maybe a thousandth, but you know, in reality it's just the, the jitter in the mounting. So that's good. Now I'm going to try and do the face. Once again, I didn't do a great job of mounting the um, dial indicator, but um, it's going to be kind of jittery here. You can see that it's sitting on about, uh, what's that, a little over two thousandths. And uh, I'm rotating it to look at the, the potential run out on the face. And all that jitter you're seeing is from the... Um, the mounting of the dial indicator so we got no run out on the face and I'm really happy. Well, once again I'm not an engineer um, in particular motor alignment is not one of my specialties but um, I do know you need to think in three dimensions um, 
So after I had the motor coupling on, the stern drive coupling on, um, and I had some run out, I thought I would try and check the face of the flywheel adapter. So I don't know if you can see that, but I've got the dial indicator on the face of the flywheel spacer slash adapter. And I'm spinning it, and it's like three thousandths out, which is great. I was going to send this thing out and get it faced, um, but I'm not going to bother now because that's nothing. So that thirty thousandths that we're seeing gets picked up um, someplace um, left to right as opposed to in and out. So we'll see what happens. So we know that um, we have a good flat surface there per perpendicular to the motor shaft and that the problem occurs, well we think the problem occurs someplace between there and there. So I put a straight edge across this thing. I had cut the pilot off of here before and I had left a high spot and um, you know the straight edge was showing a really there, showed me what was going on, I think. Um, so I just sanded that flat, and we'll see what happens. The um, resurfacing of the stern drive coupling really didn't do me any good. Um, I've got the dial indicator set on the inside of the spline there, and I don't know if you can make it out or not, but uh, we've still got you know, that same 38 thousandths of, uh, of run out. I don't really think it's going to be a problem, but I thought if I could fix it now, that would be all for the best. So we'll see. On the last clip, um, we put the coupling on the motor shaft, and then I put the um, grade 7, don't ask me why they're not grade 8, grade 7, fine thread 7 16 studs in there. They're three inches long, a little longer than they need to be, but that's what I could find. The um, Can EV adapter plate um, fit perfectly. Uh, so that just bolted up. I didn't lock tight it on yet because I just want to see how this all fits. This is the um, bell housing. Um, flywheel housing from the V6 that we took out of the boat and as you might expect it fits. Let's see here we can just find figure out how to line it up. Let's see here we'll put that one there. No that doesn't work. So let's try that again. Um, it fits really well. Just got to figure out what those were here. So that goes there. I had to um, drill out the bell housing to for 7 16 volts. That was just a fraction larger. And the spline uh, coupling is going to attach onto there. And that will look like the back end of a V6, hopefully. That goes there. So I got the motor assembly roughly put together and everything went according to plan. Um, that is in fact what the back end of a V6 OMC looks like. So these uh, slots go right on to the um, inner transom housing of the outdrive and that should line up with the gimbal bearing and just for fun I put the uh, clamp on the back end I've got adjustable uh, motor mounts here this is tube iron it's been cut to length Hopefully the angle irons that this uh, sits on in the boat are at the right height. But uh, every now and then it's nice to see a little bit of progress.